Father, we thank you and we praise you. You are good and you do good. Father, we honor you and give you all the glory and honor in this place today. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Father, through your son Jesus Christ, you made a way for us to come and worship you so that you may come and worship you in spirit and truth. Father, thank you for your spirit living in us. Our comforter, our helper, our standby, our advocate, our intercessor. The one that we need every day. We thank you for having chosen to dwell in these vessels of clay. For we have this treasure in these earthen vessels. Because of your goodness and because of your mercy upon us today, Father. Father, we are asking you today, I'm asking you, that you may reveal yourself to your people through the speaking of the word of God. This is eternal life. That you may know you the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you sent. Father, there is no single person watching that you do not know them by name. You know they are rising up. You know they are lying down. You know they are rising up. You know their thoughts are far off. And I'm asking you, Father, that there may be a personal touch upon your people to strengthen, to comfort, to heal, to deliver from every work of the enemy. I take authority over every lie of the enemy. I bind in the name of Jesus. I cast you out. I release the truth. The spirit of truth. To guide us and lead us into all truth. Even during this service. Father thank you for the blood. Thank you for the name of Jesus. Thank you for the victory. That we have. In Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. Well good morning. Victory faith. Thank you team. Good morning victory. Faith Church family. Hallelujah. Did you answer? Good morning. Greetings, greetings, greetings. Hallelujah. You may, if you've been standing, you may go ahead and please be, have, be seated. Greetings from Pastor Callum. She told me to tell you how grateful she is to the Lord for you. Uh, this is because of how much the Lord has blessed you. Just take that. It's because of how much the Lord has blessed you. Hallelujah. So much greetings from her. And then I have an announcement that as you have heard from the government, is that from next Sunday there will be a physical gathering of churches with the restrictions. Unless anything changes between today, when you hear this message on Sunday the 12th, and then we shall have a maximum and uh, a maximum of 100 people in this sanctuary. We are resuming our physical gathering uh, with support teams first, where, which who are required to pre-register online from tomorrow, Monday 13th. So the next Sunday, it will be we're starting first with support team. Now, support team members, the faster you register, the better. Because if you come to a hundred, that will be the, the limit, quote unquote. You see, I'm putting limit. That will be the limit. And then the rest of you go ahead and watch our live service from 10 a.m. on YouTube and Facebook as you have been doing uh, this past uh, months. And also, we, you shall not have our children church. But again, as you have been watching from 9 o'clock, uh, as you've been doing in the past three months, Check out our VFC website and for any updates in the course of the week, anything changes, we'll let you know on the website. So be connected. Those who are in WhatsApp groups uh, from, from Victory Faith Church will communicate. Do all that is necessary and possible 
to be able to get in touch with you and, and so that we may make progress. Pray. That's what I'll tell you. Pray. Believe God. The just shall live by faith. And that's what I've been telling you. You pray. And the, really what you need to do is to release your faith in you praying in the Holy Ghost. You can tell the enemy is walking. And I tell you, he, he, uh, months ago, I told you, be praying because what the devil wants is to take away your liberties as a believer in Christ. We will not uh, support that. We will not, uh, we will not allow the enemy to try to do that whatsoever. We'll stand against the devil. We know we have one enemy. is the devil. We stand against him. He's the enemy of the church. And the battle actually on this earth is against the church. It's against the will of God. There is one day that we shall be removed from this earth. He'll have his fun day. Because the one that have been hindering him from fully manifesting his will on earth would have been taken away in the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So I encourage you pray. Don't complain. Don't mama. Don't curse. Pray. Believe God. And let us move forward together. In fact, can you, if you're in the house, of course now you're in the same household, so join hands with someone. And I'm going to pray right here. Father, in the name of Jesus, as you have called us to pray for our leadership, we join our faith together. You say, I exhort first of all the supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Father, we give thanks for kings, for the president, President Kenyatta, and all those who are in authority in this nation. We lift them up. We proclaim the will of heaven on this earth. We bind the will of the devil in this nation. And we release the will of heaven over this nation all over concerning your purposes and your plans for your people, Father. And we thank you. We thank you for peace in this nation. You say that you may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all goodness and reverence, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of our God, who is our Savior. You desire all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. We thank you, Father, for our nation. We thank you for laws and any kind of directions that they will align themselves with the will of heaven. And we are a voice on earth. And we proclaim your voice in this nation in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, thank you, Father. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever and ever. We proclaim it in the name of of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God. You that is uh, at home, you can tell this, but the camera today looks like so far away. So I hope you can see my face. I know they know what they are doing. Hallelujah. But then don't forget that we shall be receiving Holy Communion at the end of this service and therefore make sure that you have your elements ready. Let us continue from what we have been the last two Sundays of the indwelling spirit. And we go to part three of it. If you can go to John chapter 14, please, in verse 15 and 17. He says, if you love me, Jesus speaking, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Say, for I know him, for he dwells with me and is in me. That's where the Holy Spirit, that's where coming from the indwelling spirit of God, talking about the Holy Spirit. 
In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, in verse 16, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16, it says, And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. And God has said, I will dwell in them. I will dwell in them and walk among them. I'll be their God and they shall be my people. God proclaimed it, I will dwell in them, and the way God has come to indwell us as the new covenant believers, the church, is through his Holy Spirit. Through his Holy Spirit, I will dwell in them. And then the primary, I, I say this, and I'm going to, re, to say it again, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, and if this is your first time, you are listening to this message. You can go to two messages before then. Different places. You can get them. Podcast and on and on and on. YouTube. You can get them. But the primary leading of the Lord to a new covenant believer is through the inward witness. Let's go to Romans chapter 8, 14 and 16. Romans 8, 14 and 16. He says this. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. In other words, God leads his people. And then verse 16 says, the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And then, I'm laying a foundation here in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, in verse 16, he says, Apostle Paul, writing to the church in Corinth, he says this, therefore we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Now you see something here. He's talking about the outward man and he's talking about the inward man. So actually there is the outward man and there is the inward man. The outward man is the one that we see every day. We go around, we are looking at you, I can see you. You know, if we meet... I don't see your inward man. But that's, that, then that is the outward man. And then the one that we do not see is the inward man. What is that? The scripture says so clearly in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, that man is a, is a spirit, has a soul, and lives in a body. Your spirit being, has, we have a soul, and we live in a body. So we can see the body but we cannot see the spirit of a man. So we see that the inward man and the outward man, in Christ, the inward man is born again. We know that. We say, I'm born again. But that means that we have been made new creation. And it is from this place where the Lord leads his people. He leads his people from the inward man. And there we have even that inward witness. So if we are sensitive to the Holy Spirit and to be able to listen to him who indwells us, he will lead us. And remember I kept saying last week how he does us, he does how, how does he lead us? He leads through, through that inward man, the inward witness, and he leads us in triumph. In Christ. He'll always lead us in triumph. Let, let's go to that scripture again in second, second uh, Corinthians. In verse 14, the part A of it, he says this, Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ. He leads us. He leads us. So how do... Do you want to know if you have been led by the Holy Spirit? You triumph. You triumph. One failure after another is an indicator of not living a spirit-led life. Because God has no failure in him. If you have been led by him, it's impossible for you to fail. When you see repeatedly one failure after another, it's an indication that 
you are not being led by the Holy Spirit. Or I'm not being led by the Holy Spirit. Because he doesn't lead us into failure. He leads us in triumph in Christ Jesus. So then look at this. Have you made that point? The way to eradicate failure around us is to follow that leading of the Holy Spirit. That eradicates any kind of failure. That eradicates any kind of, uh, uh, any kind of uncertainty. Is to follow after the, the impressions that come in from the inward man, not the outward man. The outward man, the outward situations change all the time. Like early in the morning when I woke up around, uh, around 4.30, I saw that the temperatures were 13 degrees Celsius. Now it has warmed up. Keep changing. You come to sometimes during noon time, it changes. Things keep changing out here. Listen, but the inward man, when he is established on the unchangeability, if there's a word like that, the unchangeability of God, he's established, he is programmed to victory. No matter what happens in this world. And then I told you uh, last week when we read the, the scripture from uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, as that perilous, we're living in perilous times. Scripture say that in, in 2, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3 from verse 1. We're living in perilous times. Therefore, we must, I say must, know the voice of the shepherd and be led by that voice. We must know that voice of the shepherd. It's not part venture. It's not part, perhaps sometimes I'm led, sometimes I'm not. No, we must know the voice of the shepherd and be led by that voice. And we looked at it last week that Jesus is a shepherd. He says, I'm the good shepherd. No victory is realized and permanent without his leading. What is our guarantee for tomorrow? The word. What is, what is a guarantee to live tomorrow and have victory? The word of God. But what am I supposed to do to come into that victory? To be led by the Holy Spirit. To listen to the voice of the Spirit. And therefore last week we looked at the characteristics of the voice of the shepherd. And today I want us to look at the characteristics of the voice of a stranger. Why is that so? Because the scripture says in 2 Corinthians 2.11 that we are not ignorant of his devices. We should not be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. Let's go back to John 10. John 10. And read those, those scriptures again. I encourage you to regularly go into these scriptures. And, and, and believe God to activate your hearing every day. Most assuredly I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice. Say, I know his voice. That's very important. You know, for they know his voice, yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Say, I do not know the voice of strangers. I know the voice of the shepherd. That should be, we should have well be, you should be well be established in that. That you know the voice of the shepherd and not of the stranger. Let me bring out uh, again, I give you a meaning or the definitions of the word stranger is foreign. Foreign. You've heard people say you are not, you are not, you in a, in a, on a strange land. <laughs> or in a strange land. That means you are a foreigner. Foreign. 
and others, stranger and others, not one's own. What people say, I heard that was a strange voice. I'm not used to that voice. Not one's own. And another word for it is hostile. Hostile. We can define the voice of the stranger as any voice other than Jesus. Foreign or strange to the voice of the shepherd. Foreign or strange to the voice of the shepherd. Hostile to. Hostile to. Stranger is foreign. Not one's own. He's hostile. So that's the, uh, some of the definitions of that word stranger as used in John chapter 10. Now, that, let me go back over here. Told you that we're looking at the characteristics of the voice of a stranger which we did even, uh, we started last, last Sunday with the characteristics of the voice of the shepherd. Now, the voice of a stranger is always negative. And it produces a sense of hopelessness. It's always negative. Produces a sense of hopelessness. If you are hanging around a person who's always negative, negative, you are hanging out with the wrong person. Produces a sense of hopelessness. So in many of those that they are called news, to your channel that you watch, they are not news. They, they keep speaking negatively and telling us how impossible to come out of situations. Another characteristic, the voice of the strangers, words of defeat. Words of defeat. Remember, the scriptures does not say that the, the, the Lord who always leads us in defeat. He leads us in triumph in Christ Jesus. He doesn't lead us in defeat. He leads us in triumph in Christ Jesus. So there are words of defeat. And then another characteristic is questions your ability and worth in Christ. Are you really born again? You've ever heard those words? If you are really born again, why are you doing this? That's not the Holy Ghost. That's not the voice of uh, the shepherd. Are you really born again? If you are really born again, why are you doing what you are doing? Questions your ability and worth in Christ. Do you really think that prayer has been answered? You see, that's not encouraging. Those are words of defeat. The, the voice of the stranger instills fear. I am going to, to, to put it clear right, right here is that there, there is no good fear. There is no good fear. For God, in 2 uh, Timothy 1 says, has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Don't entertain fear. Don't talk about fear of COVID-19. Fear of failing economy. Fear of failure. Whatever kind of fear. That's not the, the voice of the shepherd. The voice of the shepherd will speak to you, will tell you of your worth in Christ, and will tell you this. He will lead you in triumph. If all things look so bad around us, he still leads us. You know, I've been looking at the scriptures. It's amazing. Those who stay faithful and keep, keep staying in faith concerning the promises of God, I kind of look like, I can't look at the scriptures that God just enjoys blessing his people in the time of famine. He takes pleasure in doing that. Come on now, how do you get to know that is God? If he doesn't do the, he doesn't make the impossible 
possible. That's his character. In fact, it looks like through the scriptures, he is specialized. He's specialist, special, kind of like brother, speciality, like brother, brother Francis, you said, I, you know the word that we are talking about? I said, I don't. But it's what? Epidemiology? And, uh, you go check out the, the, the spelling. But his speciality is like he leads people into victory in the seemingly impossible situations. The voice of the stranger compares you to others and finds you lacking. It compares you to others and finds you lacking. Always comparing you to others. You know, in a family, if you compare yourself with the neighbors and with the others that you know over and over again, you really won't, won't make it. Because that's not the voice of the shepherd leading you. But it's the voice of the stranger who compares you to others and finds you lacking. You remember what the voice of the, 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 the shepherd does? It does not compare you with others. But it will never compare you to others. But will compare you to the standard of the word. But the voice of the, the stranger compares you to others and finds you lacking. And then another characteristic is influences you to postpone or put off praying, reading the word or going to church. Can I tell you something? If you set up your alarm to wake up at 3 to pray, and it went off at 3, and you said I'll wake up at 5, that's not the voice of the shepherd. You went quiet. That's not the voice of the shepherd telling you, no, stay in. You, you don't, we, don't, we don't want you to pray so much. There's no need of praying so much. You wake up at five. Now, no, that's not the voice of the shepherd. It might be your own flesh that doesn't want to respond. But it, com it uh, influences you to postpone or put off praying or reading the word or going to church. Let me tell you something. When you fully open... And it's sooner than you think. Don't stay at home. Don't get used to, like, I think watching online is better. Now, the scriptures, you have the scriptures concerning the gathering, the assembling together. In, in Hebrews chapter 10, from verse 25, you make up your mind. You come out of your home. You come to church. Believe us. Believe. We believe together concerning the will of God and fellowship with one another. It through the power of the Holy Spirit. Another characteristic is its words bring discouragement and depression. Its words bring discouragement and depression. Do you know actually what happens with that? Is keep listening to those negative words over and over and over again. That's how depression comes. Rehearse Rehearse. In 1981, they did this to me. They did this to me. And they did this to me in 18, 1982. They've done this over and over again. And you keep thinking about it. You keep rehearsing. You keep meditating on it. You're meditating on the voice of the stranger. You get discouraged. And if you're not careful, uh, listen, you're going to a depression. Depression is actually meditating on that voice of the stranger and taking it in and in and suck everything that the stranger says until it becomes your own. It will ever send you to a depression. I'm telling you, there are people that have gone through worse things that you can that you can imagine of but came out of those situations strong strong and told the devil devil let me tell you something about this you do all your best 
but I'm going to put my feet on the word of God and I'm going to speak the word of God and I'm going to stand in faith and I will tell everyone that I'll have an opportunity how defeated you are but you will never put me under no matter what you do. I'm going to stand in faith. You can choose that way or you can choose the other way of meditating on that voice of the, the stranger until you go under depression. Say, I will never be depressed because I do not listen to the voice of the stranger but to the voice of the shepherd. The voice of the shepherd, remember, instills abiding peace and joy. You see something who's, someone who's joyful is because they've been listening to the voice of the shepherd. Hallelujah. You'll never wake up and God tell you that you are a poor thing and you'll never make it in life. You are depressed and you're going to catch COVID-19. God will never tell you that. That's the devil. That's the voice of a stranger. You activate your, your ability, the inward man, to listen to the voice of the shepherd and stop Every kind of negativity, no matter what happens. You make up your mind. You set it right there. <laughs> you have no negativity. Between couples, husband and wife, you choose. I'm not going to have any negativity in our family. We'll not teach children negativity. We'll teach them the word of God. We'll teach them the victory in Christ Jesus. We'll teach them what God has done to, for them in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's words bring discouragement and depression. Another, another, another characteristic of a voice of a stranger encourages you to quit or give up. By the way, I can give you one scripture after another concerning this. But maybe this series, you know, in July, it may, take, may go until December. All right, but I can give you scripture, one after another, of these characteristics, and dig around that. But... But I encourage you then, in your own time, to go and dig the word. Find out the scriptures regarding that. The voice of the, of, a, of the stranger encourages you to quit or give up. Encourages you to quit or give up. You know, one of great examples, I've seen so many people, I've watched so many people, you know, on television over the years. It's wonderful to watch someone from television. But it's another thing when you get to know them. For me, one of great examples I've known, people who choose not to quit is Pastor Zwed and Carla. That things look negative. That doesn't look like they're going to, to, to make it. In, you know, and, and the ministry sometimes in the past look like, no, you're not going even to move one step. But they wouldn't tell you that you are closing doors. Keep standing. It's so easy for them to have done this. Say, you know, I think we, have, we are okay. These Kenyans can stay and let's go back home. But they chose not to. I will never forget one morning. Uh, we, had, uh, we used to meet in Kasarani, a uh, gymnasium in Kasarani Sports Center. And then we moved to Garden Estate and we had a tent in the, in the compound. And then... Uh, on a Saturday, I was called. We had pitched the tent, and now it had rained a lot. A lot. I think it was in April or it was the end of April. It had rained a lot, and then water started coming into the tent. The whole area was covered with water. I came around on Saturday afternoon, and uh, bought hay, plenty of it, put all over the 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 the. In, in the tent, the floor of the tent, there was no floor, concrete floor. It was more of a, uh, what, muddy, dirty <laughs> floor. But then put the hay all around, inside. And then I woke up early on Sunday morning, ready for the service, came to check how it had been the, the, the whole night. When we came in the morning, the place was full of water. Hay actually was soaked with water. So what, when you step in, the, in, the, in that tent, you'll hear just water chop, 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 almost everywhere. 
And then I called Pastor Wade and I said, Pastor, I think that was 2005. I said, Pastor, this is what is happening here. I explained to him just like what I've said. And then uh, he said, uh, he said, Davis, I tell you what. Why don't you go off and call uh, Kasarani and see if it's all possible that they'll be able to, to, to have us there for the service at 10 o'clock. That was just before 8. When I was calling him, I'll be honest with you, I thought he'll say, Davis, just have people, some ushers also at the gate and tell them, Tell, to tell the people to go back home because we can't have the service because of the situation. That's what I thought he was going to say. He didn't. That taught me a big lesson right there. I think that was more for me than for people, for the people. You don't quit. When you, if you're listening to the voice of the shepherd, you don't quit. The end of the story was this. We had ashes here, some few ashes, some people. We had buses in the compound and people will come here. They'll be taken to Kasarani uh, Gymnasium. I called the one who was in charge and said, you know, we can do it. We can, we, I asked, will you, will you make it by 10 o'clock for us to start the service? She said, yeah, we will. And they did, and we did, and we praised the Lord. And I learned a lesson that you'll never quit, no matter what happens. That voice of the shepherd will never encourage you to quit, but the voice of the stranger will encourage you to quit or give up. Are you about to give up? Are you about to quit? That's not God. That's not the voice of the shepherd. That's the voice of the stranger. Listen to the voice of the shepherd. Activate that voice right within you and listen to him what he will tell you. He will give you answer in the midst of that crisis and he will lead you in triumph and you'll have a testimony concerning the goodness of the Lord. And, and then there, there is a word called uh, on the characteristics of the, of, a, of the strangest subtleties. Subtleties. Subtleties are S-U-B-T. Uh, subtleties that be silent, uh, the subtleties of the enemy will tell you this, do not, uh, it does not tell you quit, but relax your faith. Balance between this God and life. There, there's nothing between. Now I'll say something which is not popular. There is no balance between the life and your life and God. God is your life. If you listen to him, he will show you exactly what to do. Now, we have a society telling us of balancing. Thank you. But that's the truth. There's no balance. It's the leading of the Holy Spirit that he will tell you. You are consumed by his way of doing things. He has become your life and he will tell you what to do in every situation. Listen, God is interested in the little things of your life. And if you develop your faith in knowing where to find things, even the little things, as little as you misplaced a key, let's see like a car key or whatever key for a certain room, and, and you ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, please forgive me. I, I, I must have put that Key somewhere unconscious. When I was unconscious, is it unconscious? I wasn't paying attention. Conscious looks like you're about to go to ICU. <laughs> but is this? I wasn't paying attention when I put that key. Well, I'm, I'm, I've misplaced it. Will you please let me know where it is, Lord? Someone say, really? Is that a question to ask the Lord? I don't know about you, but I chose to accept him as my help. I chose to accept him as my help. He will tell me things where things are. Now that's dependent on the fact that if you are orderly, if you are a disorderly person, then it becomes so difficult even for him to guide you. That's for another day. 
So the subtlety is, is do not, he does not tell you to quit. He can tell you, relax your faith, let down, take it easy. You are a young person, you need to enjoy the world, take it easy. Don't go to church too much. Don't get involved too much to the thing. That's the voice of the, the stranger. Do not stop praying, just cut back a little. You're praying too much. Cut back a little. He tell you, be practical, practical, and stop spending so much time with God. You have friends out there you need to spend time with. You'll be left out. The world is moving forward, and you are spending much time with God. That's the stranger. That's not the voice of the shepherd. Those are called subtleties. Another characteristic, he puts suspicious and jealous thoughts in your heart towards somebody you love. He puts suspicious and jealous thoughts in your heart towards somebody you love. Oh, I'll never forget this. I'll, I'll say it. But one morning, some years ago, I got ready to leave. I was leaving very early and I wanted mostly I have my fruits ready so that I can eat before I leave the house. Or at least carry them. So I woke up in the morning and I went, got myself ready, and then I came back to the bedroom, and just when about to leave, I needed to have my fruits, if not eating them at the house, but carry, or carry them. But when I went back to the, to the bedroom, I found Tina sleeping, and she was supposed to have prepared the fruits and have them ready for me so that I could leave. Then um, the first thought was, I should be sleeping. I'm leaving. She knew I was going to leave on such and such a time. I woke up, up and she said, oh, honey, forgive me. I just overslept. I said, that's fine. Would you wait for some few minutes? Said, I said, I cannot wait. I have to leave. Honey, few minutes. I said, I can't. That's fine. I'll know what to do, uh, you know, during the day. So I drove off. I left the compound and I started driving. Few minutes later, that ugly thought came. What does she mean by sleeping when she knew that you needed fruits? She could have woken up early. You know, no, 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 no. I remember where I was. I was just about to go over a bump. I said, Shut up, devil. I know Tina loves me. She didn't do it deliberately. Shut your mouth. I say it loud. I said it loudly. I forgot about it. I don't know for how long. Immediately that thought was broken. I remember one day I was in a certain meeting and that's when I remembered and gave it as a testimony. I should have entertained that thought. What could have happened during the day? Probably she could have felt so lovey-dovey. And then sent me a text, oh, sweet, I just love you. And I could have kept quiet. And then people keep quiet. And you go back to in the evening. And, uh, hi, honey, how are you? How was your day? Good. Did you have all your meetings today? Are you, are you okay? Yeah, I am. You've been feeding and feeding over those thoughts of the stranger throughout the day and he gives you thoughts and you let it go the second day, the third day, the fourth day, he'll give you better ideas for your destruction. I'll, I'll show you how to get rid of those uh, demonic uh, thoughts of a stranger. Put suspicious and jealous thoughts in your heart to somebody you love. Influences you to do things contrary to the word of God or your normal behavior. Another one is always condemning, bringing up past inadequacies, failures, or shortcomings. This could be the enemy's voice or your own voice. Refuse that voice of the stranger and take on the voice of the shepherd. Have you ever met with, you know, have you ever left someone and you are smiling and you had a good time and on and on? And then the next time you meet with them, they are sulking. They don't want even to talk to you. And you are wondering, what did I do? No, you didn't do anything. They are hearing the voice of the, the stranger. 
And they took thoughts that they shouldn't have taken. Now, the way not to follow the voice of a stranger is by knowing the voice of the shepherd. The way not to follow the voice of a stranger is by knowing the voice of the shepherd. In John chapter 10, verse 4, 5 to 5, the scripture that we read, when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet, they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. So the way not to follow that voice of the stranger is by knowing the voice of the shepherd. I've heard people say that the Lord told them something which was so contrary to the word of God. I'll never forget this. I, I know of uh, individuals. I knew them personally. They say that the Lord spoke to them to get married to someone's husband. First hand, dealing with those individuals. Counseled and counseled by the people. That I know those two individuals actually couldn't change their minds. They were ladies. They ended up losing their minds. Literally, they lost their minds because they entertained the thought of getting married to someone's husband. The shepherd will never tell you that. It's completely contrary to the word of God and to hear the voice of the shepherd is to know the word of God. Not the letter, but the spirit of the word. Remember, the word and the spirit will always agree. We can't tell you to get married to someone's wife. I got to know of it much later, but there was also a certain individual that they say that the Lord has spoken to them that I was going to get married to them. I thought I never even thought in my oldest imagination. I didn't even know the person close by. But they say the Lord told them that I was going to get married to them. And when I got married, they thought Tina was the devil. Seriously. That's amazing. That's sad. Why is that so? Because the person had been hearing or listening to the voice of the stranger. Church, for us to make it in these times that we are living, you must develop your hearing ability. You must hear the voice of the shepherd. You must know the voice of the shepherd. You must make confessions in line with the word of God concerning the voice of the shepherd and follow it. And be led by that inward witness and you'll turn out, you, you'll stand victoriously. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 6, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Let me show you something of how the, the voice of the stranger works and in comparison to the voice of the shepherd. Check out your thought patterns. Check out your thought pattern. Don't know if it's singular or plural, but check out your thought pattern. While the voice of the shepherd, the voice of the shepherd is from within. What do you mean within? The inward man. Who's that? The born again spirit. You are spirit being. You have a soul and live in a body. Well, the, the voice of the shepherd is from within. The voice of the stranger is from without. Therefore, tries to influence your mind, your soul, your way of thinking. The voice of the shepherd is right within. Remember, we are talking about the, the, the spirit, the, the spirit, the indwelling spirit. So the voice of the shepherd is, is within. In fact, the Bible says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Talking about the heart. Talking about the spirit of a man. The voice, the voice of the shepherd is from within. You'll hear it within. But the voice of the stranger 
is from without. And how does it get inject its poison, so to speak, is through your thoughts. So the faster you know how to take your thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ, the better. The better. Because by doing that, which the Bible calls in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, by renewing your mind, you are able to discern between the voice of the shepherd, it's coming from within, and the voice of the stranger, which is coming from outside, influencing your way of thinking. Is that clear? Is that comprehensible? And look at this. The only one who can divide is the word of God. I'm saying one. But it's the word of God. It's one. It's a person. It's the word of God. Because Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, it says the word of God is living and active. The word of God is living and active. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the division of soul and spirit. In other words, start sieving the soulish thoughts that are coming from being influenced by, by, by an outward, outward force, that's the, the enemy, the strangers, and from the ones that are coming from within you. And if you, you practice, and practice over and over again, and train, if we train our spirits, from, uh, train our spirits to be hearing that inward witness, it will be so easy to discern between that which is coming from the enemy and that which is coming from the Spirit of God. They are not the same. The one is foreign, which is the voice of a stranger. Remember that. It's foreign. Come on, now if you travel to a foreign land, don't you know that you're in a foreign land, you're not at home? Yeah? Come on now. If you had a foreign, foreign language, you didn't you know that that is a foreign language? Or you'll be able to, 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 to try to, to confuse it with your mother tongue. Come on, that's a very easy way. That's a very good illustration to be led by the Holy Spirit. If you had a foreign language, would you know that's a foreign language? Yes, you would. And they, or will you confuse it with your mother tongue? No. Listen, look at this. In, 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 for this, for illustration's sake. Your mother tongue then becomes the voice of the shepherd. It's familiar. You know it. And then that foreign language, Portuguese, becomes foreign to you, Kiswahili speaking person, or English speaking person. It becomes foreign. You'll know exactly this is foreign. Listen, if you, you pay attention to the word of God, you will know when a thought is foreign. And you'll know it's coming from outside. It's not coming from within. And if you follow those characteristics of the voice of the shepherd and the characteristics of the voice of the, shepherd, of the stranger, you'll be able to tell this is the voice of the shepherd and this is the voice of a stranger. But listen, it is not a mental exercise. I will caution you again. It's not a mental exercise. It's a spiritual exercise. And the way to be in the spirit is to know the word of God. Guard your mind against anything that will be contrary to the word of God. Check out your thought patterns. What are the first thoughts that come up, come into your mind when you wake up? So the first thing is this. Guard your mind. Renew your mind with the word of God so that you can be able to, to separate your mind from that which is carnal and that which is spiritual, from that which is influenced by the kingdom of darkness, from that which is the, the voice of the spirit speaking within you. Secondly, make your decision to walk in love. Make a decision. 
a quality decision. I mean, I've been taught this in the Bible school. A quality decision to walk in love. No matter what you're going to face in life. See things in the light of love. See things in the light of love. The devil will never tell you to walk in love. That's easy. The devil will never tell you forgive him. Isn't that easy? Sometimes we try to, because we haven't put a clear separation in that John 10.10. 10, uh, the thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. And uh, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Sometimes we don't put that clear distinction. We try to confuse between what is of God and what is of the devil. There is, this is light and darkness. There is no mixture. Come on now. There's no mixture between light and darkness. This is day and night. The voice of the shepherd is like day. The voice of the stranger is like dark, dark in the night. There is no, there is no coming together. There is a complete, complete separation. And the word of God is the one that brings that distinction. As the word of God indwells in us. In abundance, like the Bible says, let the word of God dwell in you richly in all wisdom. There is a clear distinction between the voice of the shepherd and the voice of the stranger. You can as well say amen, Tim. Hallelujah. Between the voice of the shepherd and the voice of the stranger. So, so when you keep, you keep having thoughts which keep contradicting agape, the love of God, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. You can read it uh, in your own time in verse, uh, chapter 13 from the Amplified Bible. You know the shepherd is not speaking to you, but a stranger. God will never tell you to revenge. God will never tell you, no, don't, don't, don't forgive. But the stranger will. But... As for you, make a quality decision to walk in love no matter what happens. No matter what you'll ever face in life. Don't carry bitterness. Because if you carry bitterness, you will not hear that voice of the shepherd. Another one, the third point is this. Pray much in the spirit. Pray in tongues. Pray in the spirit. You know what praying the spirit does actually, church? Oh, let me have words for this. Father, thank you for your help. When you're praying in the spirit, the scripture shows us so clear it's coming from your inner man. The Bible says out of your belly shall flow the rivers of living water. I'll give you some scriptures. You, I know you know them. Uh, and, and in first. Corinthians chapter 14, it says this, when you're praying the spirit, your, your mind is unfruitful. But your spirit prays. So and actually, when I'm praying in the spirit, that those words are coming from my inward man. And they're not influenced by my outward man. And the way God leads his people is through that inward man. So that means I am activating God's ability. I'm activating the ability within me given by God to be led by him in situations. Observing out here does not give us solutions, but listening inside of us. In that born again spirit, we get solutions. Listen, church, I'm telling you, I know this to be the truth, and it, sh it is so, the way to overcome what is in the world right now and the perilous times, this is, there is more difficult times in the future. Or you are prophesying doom, or the scripture says it. The way to overcome, the way to go over, no matter what comes on this earth, as long as we are here, is to listen to the voice of the shepherd, to hear the instructions of the shepherd, and to obey the voice of the shepherd. And I'm telling you, 
we will place the devil where he belongs, under our feet, no matter what happens, no matter what he brings our way, we'll continue moving forward. It's the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. L let me show you something quickly as you wind up. Let me, let me make a point here. Something so important for you to know, church, is that listening to the voice of the shepherd is so important that you can't go around confessing the word of God when he's told you, when he's told you don't do that and you start confessing the word of God again is what he has told you. Let me, let me, let me see if I can be able to make, uh, to make faith out of this. Not sense, make faith. <laughs> let me give you an example. Probably you are leaving the house you wanted to leave at 9 o'clock. And you pray in the Holy Ghost. You've gotten into the world. You pray in the Holy Ghost. And you, you hear that inside of you. Leave at 9.15. Don't leave at 9 o'clock. Leave at 9.15. And you say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not fear. I bind the devil. I stand against the blood. And I, I stand against the enemy by the blood of the Lamb. Glory to God. And angels go. You're in disobedience. Remember, he is the guide. He's guiding you. You go to a park or you go to a mountain without a guide, you'll wander away and wander and wander and disappear. There are caves there with beasts. But if you're following the guide, he's the one, he knows the mountain. Maybe because I like the mountains. He knows the mountain. He knows the forest. You follow the guide, he will lead you. He knows exactly what is there. So if he told you leave at 9.15, leave at 9.15, don't leave at 9. If you left at 9, most likely it's a tragedy that is awaiting. But what you needed to do is to listen to the voice of the shepherd and follow him. What does that mean? It actually a matter of life and death. I do believe this. Living long Healthy life is dependent on the voice of the shepherd. I believe, I believe this. Living in prosperity and, and, and experiencing breakthroughs after breakthrough is listening to the voice of the shepherd. Activate that. Get into the word of God. Walk with love. Pray much in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost during this time and see testimonies one after another coming in showing you how to, 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 to deal with the children and to, to work with the children these months. Remember, the schools are opening in January unless anything changes. As the shepherd, instead of complaining, this COVID-19, this government, this government, this government, this government. Tanzania has opened. We haven't opened. No, no, you're not in Tanzania. You're in Kenya. What are you supposed to do? Ask the Lord, what am I supposed to do with these children these months that are remaining? And he will guide you and lead you into all truth. Did you receive anything out of this? I didn't hear you. Did you receive anything out of this? Take heart to it. Listen to it and let him lead you. Stand up on your feet, please, as we prepare ourselves to receive Holy Communion. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Just get ready. Just lift up your hands. Lift up your hands and just thank the Lord. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the living word. I am the sheep and I know the voice of the shepherd. The voice of the stranger I will by no means follow. I want to be led by you. I want to be led by you. Thank you, Father, for your spirit within me. I commit myself to you to the word of God, I make a quality decision to walk in love. And I make a decision, a quality decision to pray much more in the Holy Ghost. And thank you, Father, for your faithfulness to lead me 
in triumph in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Go ahead and pray in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Leading, leading by the Holy Spirit. Guidance by the Holy Spirit. The activation of the hearing ability of your people, Father. To know the voice of the shepherd. To follow the voice of the shepherd. To be guided and led into all truth through the power of your spirit. Father, thank you for your people. You have given us your spirit to indwell us. Not to be defeated, but to walk in victory. Not to struggle. You've called us in your word. We are more than conquerors. Thank you for your guidance. Thank you for your leading. I can confidently say this in every situation that you are in. If it looks like you do not have an answer, the answer is within you. Take time to listen to the word of God and get into the word of God. Take time to make quality decisions concerning your obedience to him and take time to pray in the Holy Ghost. You will know. You will know. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of a man which is in him. Your spirit knows your things. If you listen to him, he will guide you. He will lead you. He will speak to you. And whatever he tells you to do, do it. Because he will never contradict the word of God. But if you follow that voice of the shepherd, you will realize victory after victory. For the path of a just man is as a shining light that shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. Receive your victory. Receive the activation of the voice of the shepherd within you. And thank you, Father, for your grace and mercy upon your people, leading us into victory, into glorious times ahead of us. Glorious times that you have for the church. Hallelujah. Glorious victories that you have for the church. Even this hour when the world seems like it's so dark. You've told your people to arise, shine. For your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Thank you, Father, for leading us. Thank you for strengthening us. To walk in victory even in this hour. Thank you for breakthroughs after breakthroughs. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I want you to partake of Holy Communion in the place of victory. Not defeat. In the place of victory. The Bible says, whatsoever things we desire, when we pray, we believe that we receive them and we shall have them. Say, Father in heaven, I believe I have received the ability to hear clearly the voice of the shepherd. It is in me. It is inbuilt. And the voice of the stranger, I will by no means follow. Just lift up his, his body. Jesus, our Lord, we are members of your body. Thank you, Father. We are joined with you, Lord. We are one spirit with you. Being one spirit with you, we hear you. We humble ourselves to hear your voice and to know your voice better than we've ever known before. And by the partaking 
the breaking of the bread in that Luke 24. The scriptures say, as you partook, you broke the bread with those two disciples. Their eyes were open and they knew you. So we believe we receive our ability to see and to hear as we partake and this body in remembrance of you who took our sins in your own body on the tree that has been dead to sins might live for righteousness. Righteousness is here in you, sir, by whose stripes we are healed and thank you for the healing. even concerning recurring sicknesses. The voice of the shepherd knows, the shepherd knows everything concerning you. You need to inquire of the Lord. You need to ask him. You've gone to doctors and they've told over and over again and they don't know what they're dealing with. You ask the Lord. You ask the Lord. You pray in the Holy Ghost and listen within you and let him lead you and guide you into all truth. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for your precious blood that you bought us from the kingdom of darkness. We were influenced by darkness. But now you brought us into your kingdom, Father. That we are the sheep of your pasture, led by you. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the precious blood, for the redemption that you brought you bought us with a price you bought us with this precious blood of Jesus and by the authority that is in the word of God I plead the blood over your people everyone called into this pastoral covering we plead the blood over them with an agreement as pastors Pastor Carl and I, and we plead the blood of Jesus over your people. And charge the angels all over their dwelling places and speak Psalm 91. There shall be no infection. There shall be no disease. There shall be no voice of the strangers leading you astray. But we pray and speak that voice of the shepherd leading you and guiding you into all truth. Thank you, Father, for the precious blood of Jesus. Amen. You may partake of this blood. Hallelujah. Are you ready, Tim? Hallelujah. Praise be to God. We love you, church. And support teams, those who are going to register quickly from Monday, we'll see you next, next Sunday. The rest... <laughs>